Hello, sharing a personal practice with you, a physical practice that you can do without any equipment. I have a blanket and a block and a bolster pillow here, but that can be a stack of books, one of your own blankets and a pillow. Okay, you don't have to have anything fancy. So first of all, begin with some breathing. Close your eyes and notice the breath. Allow yourself to be still and to be calm by slowing and deepening the breath, even just for one minute. Initiating the breath and finishing the breath from the diaphragm. Telling your central nervous system to calm and release through your body. Start to add some strengthening to the breath, building this internal heat to help us sustain through our exercise today. So as you exhale, squeeze the abdominals like a sit up without the movement. Even gently clasp the back of the throat and even scoop up the pelvic floor so our, we have these three internal locks happening to help sustain our posture and our practice. Helping us to feel strong internally. And go ahead and take your hands. I'm sitting on the pillow. I'm gonna go ahead and come off the pillow if it's difficult to sit on the floor, which it is for a lot of people, it's nice to sit on a pillow because it opens up through the hip flexor so you're not feeling as, as scrunched on the floor. But if you feel okay, go ahead and sit down on the floor. Either way, take your hands at the tops of the knees. As you inhale, press the chest forward. Exhale, tuck the chin and round the spine. Inhale, lift up. So just getting some spinal flexion. I'll even turn to the side so you can see and exhale, tuck the chin around the spine. So imagine a balloon inside of your chest, inside of your body, that as, it, as it inflates, it wants to lift up and rise towards the sky, taking your body with it. So when you inhale, you lengthen and lift. And as you exhale, that imaginary balloon is deflating, allowing you to soften, which is actually when your abdominals are the strongest, is because they're squeezing the breath out. One more time, inhale, lift up. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, gently twist to your right. And breathe down low into the belly. Even though we have this open available space in the chest, we want to push the breath down so we let the breath do the work. We can crank our body physically, but that can eventually lead to the point of injury. So, so there's so much power in gentleness. We don't have to push so hard to achieve results. So if I push the breath down in the belly in a twist, then my breath, as my diaphragm and lungs are expanding, are pushing against my internal organs and my muscles, so I don't have to crank my body so far. Just a few breaths. Even turn your chin towards the right shoulder. And turn the other side, or maybe a few of the spinal flexion before we go the other side in case you feel a little bit too tight going straight into another twist. Once you turn to your left, take a breath and sit up tall and exhale, twist. Keep the left shoulder down, turn your chin towards the left shoulder and breathe down low into the belly, five breaths. turn back around come on to hands and knees great place for the blanket underneath your knees or if you're on carpet or just anything you can do to make yourself more comfortable it's totally fine take your hands right under the shoulders your knees right under the hips feet straight out from the shin so we're not sickling the ankles okay so we inhale continuing the spinal flexion inhale lift the top of the head and the tailbone exhale tuck the chin round the spine Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, round the spine. One more time. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, round the spine. Come back to a lengthened spine and extend your right foot back. Follow the foot to the mat and press back. A nice stretch in the calves. Keeping this practice a little basic. 
So there's no, I don't like intimidation factor. So there's no advanced or modified. I don't like teaching that way because what's modified to someone is still advanced to someone else. So everything is options and I'll go through lots of options that will help you in your practice. Start to shift forward again. So your hips right over the knee and lift the legs straight back and see how you feel balanced. Pull the abdominal muscles up towards the spine to feel nice and secure. Then extend the left arm forward. So my right leg is back, left arm is forward. Exhale, bring the elbow to the knee. Finding some balance. Inhale, extend back up. Three times. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend. Keeping your gaze down at the mat. So your cervical spine, your neck stays lengthened. And you're not kinking the back of your neck. And bring it down. Inhale, extend the left foot to the back or just behind you and press back with the back of the heel. A few breaths, stretching through the calves. Then shift forward, lift the legs straight back. So we're not going high, we're just lifting straight back. And if you feel balanced with the belly lifted, extend the right arm forward. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend back out. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend out. Stretching through the fingers and the toes. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, hands and knees, and let's sit back in child pose for a moment. Sitting back on our feet, breathing into the left side, into the left side. Walk the hands forward, back to child pose. Inhale up, hands and knees. Tuck the toes, lift the knees and hips up, and press back, pedaling through the feet. Even twist your heels from side to side, pressing one hip back at a time. Spread your fingers wide, pressing your weight into the fingertips and the knuckles of the hands, which is gonna help eliminate some of the pressure in your wrists and your shoulders. And press the chest back. So downward dog is about lengthening the spine, not about getting your heels down. So if I look like this and I'm rounded, but my heels are down, that's not as important as lifting the heels, bending the knees a little bit and pressing back. Start to walk up to meet your hands. Hold here in a fold. If it's really tight in your hamstrings, place your elbows to the thighs and gently bend your knees. Relax your, your uh, neck down. Shake your head yes and no. Three really important words in a forward fold is tuck your chin, okay? So you have all this kink in the back of the neck. Bring it down. And slowly start to roll up one vertebrae at a time to standing. So I'm gonna stay facing the side as we go through this movement. So inhale, arms out around and up. Great big breath, exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees whenever you need to. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back to a plank or come down to the knees. Take a breath. Exhale, lower down, either all the way down to the mat or just to elbows at, 40, at a 90 degree angle. Inhale, drop the hips down, lift to cobra. Exhale, back to downward dog. Few breaths here. Pedal through your feet. Inhale, walk up to meet your hands, lift halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach arms out around and up. Exhale, take arms down to the side. Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, lower halfway down or all the way down to the belly. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, back, pressing the hips back. A few breaths here. Inhale, walk up to meet your hands and lift halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands down. Adding on from here. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, bend your knees. Sink the weight back into the heels and take your left arm back. So you're bringing your chest into a twist facing your left side, but the hips and knees face forward. So the action is here. We're creating a twist, really healthy for the spine. Keep the knees bent. Inhale, swing the back arm back up. Exhale, twist to your right. Inhale, sweep up, lengthen the legs, lift all the way up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat, step back, shift forward slightly. So as you lower down, elbows at 90 degrees or come to the knees. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, step your right foot between your hands. Just grab your leg and bring it up there, okay? <laughs> Doesn't have to be graceful. Maybe even bring the back knee down. This is a great option. As you inhale, lift your arms up, or for a little more balance challenge, keep the knee lifted. Inhale, lift up. Holding right here. Again, initiating the breath from the belly and the diaphragm. Lifting it up. Every muscle in the body's working. Exhale, lower the hands down. Inhale, step back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, sink back. Inhale, step the left foot between your hands. Remember, you maybe drop the back knee down and lift up. Or lift the back knee and lift up. Holding here a few breaths. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, step back. Exhale, lower halfway. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Five breaths. Inhale, step up to meet your hands. Lift up halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale, take hands down to heart center or down at your sides. One more round, just like that. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend the knees, twist to your left. Keep the knees bent, inhale, lift up. Exhale, twist to your right. Inhale, lift up, lengthen the legs all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands down. Step back, shift forward. Exhale, lower down halfway or all the way down to your belly. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, right foot forward. Lifting the arms up. Hold here a couple breaths. Now both feet facing forward. That keeps the hip flexors, the hips facing forward. We're not rotating out just yet. We're keeping everything forward. That also challenges the balance a little bit more. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, step back. Shift forward. Exhale, lower halfway. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, left foot between the hands. Lift the arms up. Hold here a few breaths. Nice, strong, deep breaths. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, step back. Shift forward. Exhale, halfway. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Great place to go to is right here in child pose, anytime. Inhale, step up to meet the hands. Lift halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift all the way up. Exhale, take your hands down to your sides. From here, step back with your left foot. So right foot forward, left foot back. This time we do have an ankle in the back leg. So I'm gonna turn forward so you can see that. So this is where we were before. 
Both of our feet are facing forward. Now we're gonna externally rotate the left hip so by swiveling the back heel down. That opens with the hip flexors, gets a totally different stretch, and you feel a little bit more balanced because we have more space of the foot on the floor. So holding here, clasp the hands behind, inhale, lift the chest, opening through the shoulders and through the chest, really nice stretch as you're strengthening your lower body. Inhale, release and lift the arms up. Exhale, open to the side. So now my back foot turns out a little bit more so it's parallel with whatever wall's behind me. And my front leg is forward. My hips are facing the side, so I'm open to the side. Palms facing down. Maybe even scoot back so front leg is always stability. Back leg is mobility. So if I want to move a little bit, if I'm too low or I want to get lower, I move the back leg. Extend the arms out. Exhale, reach forward. Flip the front palm. Inhale, reach back. Take your back hand to the back of the thigh. Breathe into your front lung. Exhale, take the elbow to the thigh. Lift the opposite arm up and maybe even overhead or option to take this bottom hand to the ground and lift the arm overhead. Breathing into the top lung. Inhale, cartwheel back up. Exhale, start to turn or swivel the back arm forward. Turn the back foot forward. Nice low lunge. Exhale, take the hands down. Keep the back knee lifted. Keep your left hand, my right foot is forward, my left hand is on the ground or on top of blocks or a pillow if I need a little more height. And twist and lift the right arm up. Pressing the left heel, the back heel back. Exhale, lower the hand down. Inhale, step back and either come to your knees or lower halfway down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, step your left foot between the hands. Swivel the back heel down and lift up. So we're doing the exact same thing on the other side. We just started from the ground rather than starting from standing. So I'm going to turn the other way. So I stay facing you. And lifting up. So the back heel, swivel down. External rotation in the right hip, facing forward. Clasp the hands behind. Inhale, lift up. Open the chest and the shoulders. Really great stretch for those of us that might have bad posture and we lean forward a lot. We're opening this space. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, open to the side. Palms facing down. Back foot turns just slightly so it's parallel with the back of the wall behind you. And extend and hold right here. Exhale, reach forward. Flip the front palm. Inhale, reach back. Breathe into this top lung. Exhale, bring the elbow to the thigh. Lift the opposite arm up, maybe overhead. Breathe into this top lung now. Or option is to take the hand down. Inhale, cartwheel back up. Exhale, drop the back arm. Down, inhale, swivel back to the front. Back foot faces forward. Exhale, lower down. Right hand plants into the floor. Left arm lifts up as I twist to the left. Press back in the back foot. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, step back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale back. Nice. How you doing? Good. <laughs> Inhale, start to walk up to the center of the mat. Roll up one vertebrae at a time. Roll the shoulders back. I'm going to face you. Shift your weight to the right foot. Now going through some balance. So I'm going to take my left foot and place it on a bone, not a joint. Okay, sometimes I see tree, I see tree pose like this, drives me batty. <laughs> you don't rest your foot on a joint that can move and, and 
put too much pressure there. So we want to balance our opposite foot on a bone that's strong and stable, okay? So place your foot on the calf, or maybe even keep your toes to the floor, or option is the inner thigh, wherever you wanna go. Take your hands either to the chest, or maybe lift your arms up. So I'm gonna take my foot down. So there's always this concept of going, going where you can go and feel successful, rather than going where you think you should be. So that's why I'm trying to keep things pretty basic. So you're not watching me, you're listening and then doing what your body tells you it can do and feeling really proud of yourself and really strong and empowered and capable and confident that you can do what you're doing at the time and can go from there rather than frustrated or using the word can't that we don't use, okay? <laughs> Few more breaths in this balance, wherever you choose to be. Lifting up, squeezing the glutes, rolling the shoulders back down. Find stillness in the chaos. That's what we're practicing, is placing our bodies in maybe a frustrating place or a frustrating situation in order to practice breathing calmly through something frustrating. That's what we're practicing. And we're getting stronger in the meantime. Set the foot down, shake it out a little bit. Loosen up, inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, roll up. Nice. Shift your weight to the left foot, same thing. Tree pose on the other side. So here, or here, remember, on a bone. Place your hands wherever they're comfortable, hips. Heart center, open, maybe a tree in the breeze, whatever, okay? <laughs> go where you wanna go. One reason why I enjoy practicing balance poses while you're here breathing through this is when my mind's in 50 places at once or I feel out of control, when I practice balances, it helps me to feel in control. It helps me to feel, you have to be honed in. My gaze is focused in order to help my body stay focused my breath is focused in order for my body to focus on what it's doing. It's really hard to balance if your mind is everywhere. So you practice balance to hone everything in and feel back into control. It's a great practice. Couple more deep breaths. And take it down, shake it out. One of my favorite poses, car dealership, inflatable man. Okay, just shake it out. <laughs> Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up again, roll up. We'll go through more balances at another time. Come on down to the mat. Come to a seated position, working on abdominals and core. Core is your front and your back. It's not just your stomach. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm gonna work on my core, so I do sit-ups, and then we wonder why our lower back hurts. We have to work the transverse abdominals, which, which wrap around the entire body like a girdle underneath the abdominal muscles. So we need to work the front and the back. So we'll start with the front. As we lean back, lift the legs up. Maybe hold on to the back of your thighs, that's great. Maybe place your hands down, that's great. Maybe extend your legs and your arms, doesn't matter. If you start to feel just your hip flexors, bend the knees more, lift the chest. We don't wanna be here, okay? We wanna be lifted up. So I bend my knees so I can do that. Extend the arms. Just maybe five deep breaths. Squeezing, constricting abdominals on the exhale. Your exhale is where the, breath, the abdominals are the strongest. They're squeezing and wringing out. That's where you would lift the legs or initiate a sit up because your abdominals are already strong at that point. Maybe take your hands behind your head. Start bicycling, exhale. Take a breath and lift up. Exhale. Exhale as you extend, even though you want to lengthen, you think it's an inhale, but again, the strength is on the exhale. Wherever you need the strength, use the exhale to create and find that strength. Three more times on each side.
And this is the fun part. Lift up, cross your feet, take your hands in front of you and see if you can jump back. Just kind of fun. And lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale back. Great place for child pose right here. Wherever you want to go. Just a couple breaths. Then come down to hands and knees. Plank time, tuck the toes, lift up. Squeeze the knees, squeeze the glutes. Neck in line with the spine, so your gaze is straight down. Holding here, nice and strong. Great place to breathe into your back and breathe into the side lobes of the lungs like fish's gills. You're flaring open in the sides. Three breaths. Take your left foot, lift it up, cross it over, and open to the side. Great place to bring the right knee down. And if you wanna work on this, maybe lift the left leg up. Exhale, take the hand down, separate the feet. Inhale, lift the right foot, cross it over, open it up, or bring the left knee down and lift the leg up. Wherever you wanna go. Wrist right under the shoulder. Exhale, lower down. Back to plank, shift forward. Exhale, halfway or all the way. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back to child pose. Breathe into your back. Breathe right here. Think of breathing into your kidneys. Flare open that space. Disperse your breath in different places in your body. So great, so healthy. Inhale back up, extend the right leg back. Exhale, bring the foot to the outside of your hand. Now if this is too much in the hips, anything we do facing the mat or facing the ground, we can do facing the sky. So if this is too much in my hips, I can flip around and come right here, okay? Taking my body weight off of my hips. But I'm gonna stay down, move the back knee back a little bit. Great place to place some padding under your knee. Turn the right foot out to the side. External rotation in the right hip. So I'll turn and show you. So I'm this way. Shift the weight to the left hand and twist. Maybe gently press the inner thigh very carefully. Maybe lift the arm or take it around the back. Watching the left shoulder that we're not dumping into the shoulder and causing some discomfort that we don't notice until we get out of the pose. So tuck, plug the shoulder in, maybe even come to the forearm. Awesome. Just a few breaths. I'll turn back to the side. Start to lift up, walk your right foot towards the left hip. Bring the knee down. This is a great place for your stack of books or whatever you want to place underneath you, a pillow underneath your right glute so you're sitting on it. So I'll turn to the front again. So my foot is out towards the opposite hip. I'm going to sit on whatever I have to prop myself up. It can be anything. And sit on it to help release so you don't feel like you're compressing the joint too much or pushing too hard that could eventually lead to injury. So if you don't need to sit on anything, then sit straight back, create some tension, squeeze the glutes, pull the femurs into the hip sockets by squeezing the glutes first, then start to release down, maybe come to your forearms. Turn back to the side. Relax your face. There's no new reason for you to look at the screen. You don't need to look at me. Just listen. Turn your head down. Close your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. Relax even the spaces behind your eyes. Relax your forehead. Relax your fingers and your toes, your belly. You're feeling this deep stretch, this tension happening. You're processing it. 
You're allowing yourself to remain calm during something frustrating. If we can do that physically, it can help us do that mentally and emotionally, maybe in conversations with people, maybe in an uncomfortable conversation, or in the situation that we are in right now, learning how to be comfortably uncomfortable, learning to be okay with perhaps not being okay, to not be reactive. That doesn't mean being passive, but we're just reacting in a healthy way. A few more deep breaths. You can push pause and stay there for a little longer. It's good to stay there for a few minutes at least to allow the fascia and connective tissues to rehydrate. But for now, we're gonna to start to lift up. Keep your eyes closed. This is really important. Close your eyes and just let your body lift up into any in intuitive movement or counter position that your body naturally wants to go to to help feel released. Without me telling you where to go, just get some movement. If your body could speak, what would it say? How do you listen to yourself? When you're ready, extend the left leg back, bring the foot to the outside. I'll turn this way, to the outside of your left hand. And again, you can flip over onto your back if this is too strenuous or Grab something to place your hands on to lift your floor, to create some height. Always protecting yourself. Less is more, okay? Turn your foot out to the side, external rotation in the hip. Shift your weight to the opposite hand. Gently twist, maybe press the thigh away or lift the arm, maybe take it behind your back. Watch this shoulder, plug it in, even bend the elbow slightly so we're using our muscles to hold us here and not dumping into the shoulder. Plug it in. Every part of our body is active. Imagine siphoning your breath into your hips, into your legs, wherever you feel tension. Let the breath flow there. Let the breath flow there. Calm yourself down. Start to bring the hand down, lift up. Walk your foot to the opposite hip. Slide the back leg back a little bit. And again, if this is too difficult, flip over onto your back and cross your ankle over your knee. Actually, your shin over your thigh. So here, and press the knee away or lift the legs up, reach through the window, hold onto your legs and pull back. If that feels a little too tight, to be on the floor, flip over and go ahead and do that. And lift up, squeeze the glutes, find some buoyancy here, lifting up, maybe place the books or block, whatever you have to prop yourself underneath your left glute. Hug everything in, plug the femur bones into the hip sockets to create some rotation rather than the thought of pulling apart. Then start to release the muscles and release into this. Release your head, release your neck, and breathe into, imagine breathing uh, into your tension, into your glutes, into your thighs, wherever you need the release. Sometimes you can imagine giving your breath a tangible form or a temperature. So maybe your breath feels light and cool like bubbles. Maybe it feels heavy and warm like honey. Whatever it is, imagine your breath gliding through this space to help ease and release the tension. Closing your eyes. Just keep listening to my voice without looking at me. And relax your face. Relax your jaw, relax your belly, relax your forehead, relax your hands and feet. 
breathe softness and calming release into these spaces visually. Giving yourself some space to be quiet and still. You can push pause and hold here a little bit longer. When you're ready, start to lift up. Keep your eyes closed and move intuitively to whatever feels good to you to feel release, whether it's a counter stretch or movement. Pay attention to yourself. It's much more important to listen to your body and listen to yourself than it is to listen to me. I can guide you, but you listen to what's best for you. I can't feel what you're feeling. When you're ready, come to a seated position, soles of the feet together. Great place for blankets or pillows underneath your knees. Take a breath as you hold on to your feet or your legs. Take a breath and lift up. Everything's connected. As soon as I lengthen my spine, my legs have to compensate. They pull a little bit more. So I might not need to lean forward to feel this stretch here as soon as I lift up. So notice that. Lift up, squeeze the glutes. And then if you need a little bit, a little bit more, lean forward. Maybe bring the elbows to the calves. And breathe into the tension. And again, push pause here if you want to stay here longer. I'm just going to stay here a shorter period of time. Inhale, lift up, bring the knees, use your arms to lift the legs up. And I'm mirroring you, so bring your left leg forward, wrap your left arm around the right knee, take the right hand behind and do a twist. Inhale, lift up, exhale, twist. You can pull the knee towards the shoulder for a nice stretch in the medius muscle here on the side, or bring the back of your arm to the top of the thigh and press to isolate the twist in the spine. Again, watching your left shoulder, or your right shoulder, Bringing it down, bending the elbow if you need to, and breathe down low into the tight space. Let the breath do the work. As you exhale, slowly release, extend the right leg forward, take a breath as you lift up. And again, because your hamstrings just compensated by lengthening, as soon as you lengthen your spine, you might need, not need to lift or press forward. So if you need a little more stretch, take your hands behind you. This opens through the shoulders and the chest. In our day and age, we've overstretched the upper back and we've tightened the chest because we're here all the time. Phone, driving, whatever it is, gardening, dishes, I don't know, we're always here. So take the shoulders back. We need to strengthen the back and stretch the chest. So lift up, take the hands back, press gently and bring the chest down. So it's more about bringing the chest down rather than the head and shoulders down. You might even feel this is a much deeper stretch in the legs than if it was when you round your spine. So lengthen and press down, just gently, just tell your legs tell you to stop and breathe right there. Then if you want to go farther, you can start to take your hands towards your feet but it's just fine staying right here. Sometimes if you push something too hard, it breaks down. I read somewhere that whether it is a appliance, a car, a relationship, or your physical body, sometimes the harder you push something, the faster it breaks down. So why? Do we push so hard? You push to the point where you're, we get, our bodies need compression. We need to sweat. We need to strengthen. But especially when it comes to stretching, there is such thing as pushing too hard. <laughs> so just go to where your body feels the tension, and that's where it's telling you, hey, this is tension. 
and then that's where you breathe. Start to lift up. Other side, bring the left knee towards the chest, wrap the right arm around, left arm comes behind. Take a breath as you lift up, exhale, twist. Turn the chin towards the left shoulder and breathe down low into the belly to open that space with the breath. Or again, take the back of the arm to the top of the thigh to isolate the twist in the spine. I also read once that Socrates said, if you seek health, look to the spine. So every day, we need six different directions of flexion in our spine every day. If you want to tie your shoes forever, flexion in the spine. So it's forward, back, side, side, and twist, twist, rotation. Six different directions every single day. Take a breath and lift up. And we won't stay here too much longer because we were just here just to release from the twist. And lift up. Go ahead and lie on your back. Bring your feet to the mat and lift the hips up. Taking my hands to the sides, I'm gonna lift the hips up high. Maybe clasp the hands underneath and roll onto the shoulders and triceps. And holding here, maybe lift the arms up. Option is to lift one leg up at a time. Depending on what you feel you need. Another option is to come to a half wheel, which we'll go through another time because I don't want to teach that without clear direction. And I'll do that when we have more time to keep everyone safe. Release the hands, exhale, roll down. Inhale, bring the knees to the chest. Give yourself a hug and mean it. When was the last time you hugged yourself? Right? We need it. Give yourself a hug. Put your oxygen mask on before you give it to someone else. That way you won't feel depleted at the end of the day. You'll actually feel fulfilled. Cross the ankles, rock and roll up, fold forward just for a minute with the knees out. Inhale, lift up and exhale, roll down, extend your legs, hands to your sides and stay there as I talk to you for a moment. As you're lying down, maybe today is a day that you feel open and expressive with your feet farther apart. Maybe your arms are up over your head or elbows bent, open up wide. Maybe today's a day to feel embraced and to feel a little secure. Maybe your feet are together or crossed. Maybe your arms are around your chest and your belly, embracing yourself. Let your body manifest what's in your head. But by you choosing to do that, our body manifests what's in our head anyway. So why not tell it what to manifest? Instead of stress or tension, ulcers, changing our eating patterns, changing in our sleeping patterns, because we're out of control here in our head. I, I call it taking your meditation. Take your meditation. Breathe into that space. Go back to the balanced breath. Same amount of time, inhale as exhale, maybe five to eight counts in, five to eight counts out. Tell your body to manifest something great through stillness and strength and release. Rather than stress and tension, get rid of that. Easier said than done, it takes time, but that's why we're practicing it. As you lay here in the stillness, notice what thoughts come to mind. Connecting with your divinity. Putting yourself in a place to listen and to feel.
Imagine your breath spilling into each vertebrae, flooding into the next and filling it, flooding into the next and filling it, even wrapping into your rib cage, flooding down into your legs, into your toes, flooding down into your arms, flooding up into your head, filling yourself with this healing, satisfying, strengthening breath. Start to bring some life and movement back into the stillness. Wiggle your fingers and your toes, maybe your face, your jaw, your forehead. And take your time, maybe rolling onto your right side for a moment in a fetal position. And slowly take your time, making your way up to a seated position and keep your eyes closed. Let your brain register what you feel rather than what you see. Pay attention to you. It's easy to check out. Pushing everything aside and living over on the other side for a minute, pretending those things don't exist. So check in. It's harder to check in. Bring it in. Notice how you feel. Let those thoughts come so you can validate them, own it, manifest it, breathe through it in order for those thoughts and uncomfortable, uncomfortable feelings to pass in order to feel like you've strengthened yourself. So next time those thoughts come, they might not bother you as much because you have learned to react in a healthy way. Beautiful practice. Thank you for joining me for yourself. Have a beautiful day.